I am Alexis Johnson. I'm the social media manager here at RSDSA. I'm joined by Jim Broach, executive vice president and director of RSDSA, and Jennifer Shulkin, who will discuss her company, Override Health, in dealing with chronic pain when nothing else has worked. Jimmy is a Harvard Law School graduate. She served as a federal law clerk, Manhattan assistant district attorney, and private white collar criminal defense attorney. As a person with several years of complex chronic pain, she is the co-founder of Override, a digital health company offering team-based care with pain medicine physicians, physical therapists, psychologists, and certified pain coaches who work individually with patients and together as a team. And I'm really excited to learn more about Override with all of you this evening. I'm of course going to post a link to Override's website in the comments, so be sure to check it out during her presentation. Now, before we get started, as always, remember that while the information shared here is helpful, please consult your physician for personalized medical advice. And one more announcement before we get started, we would like to thank Paramount Global for sponsoring tonight's Facebook Live. Now, Jim, we have a lot of things coming up, a lot of cool things happening here at RSDSA, so I'll turn it over to you. Thanks, Alexis. And, and everyone, happy summer. Welcome back. We're real excited about this is our first Facebook Live in the summer. And also, Alexis has been working hard with our website design team for the last number of months, and our, our website has been launched. There's a few things we have to improve on, but that's something. Please go to it, rsds.org. And also, what's exciting, too, is many of you worked, uh, walked, enrolled in our virtual walk, we've raised almost $50,000 and people from all kinds of states. And we thank Kelly for her tremendous leadership. And we have two more walks, one in New Jersey on September 10th and one and another one, our favorite one too, in um, Long Island. And we're gonna be our fifth, fifth year and Debbie O'Neill is leading that for us. And that's on September 9th in Alexis, that's my birthday. so. Come celebrate awesome. with me and, and hopefully a thousand other people with CRPS and family members. Oh, yes. so, all right. So thank you, everybody. I'm looking forward to our presentation. All right, Jenny, the floor is yours. Thanks, Alexis. And thanks, Jim, for having me on tonight. I just want to check. Can everybody see my screen? Yes, Alexis, Jim. Okay. All right, so just to reintroduce the company, our company is called Override, as in overriding chronic pain, and we are virtual interdisciplinary care for chronic pain. Our website is www.override.health, not .com. Now, Alexis already introduced me, so you know that I'm a lawyer, you know that I'm a person with chronic pain, and you know that I'm the CEO and co-founder of Override. I do want to mention briefly my co-founder, who's also my father, Dr. David Shulkin. This is a family-run business, and this is a mission near and dear to our heart because of the nine and a half years that I've spent in pain. My father brings the medical expertise to the company. He has spent his career treating patients as an internist and leading major health systems across the Northeast. Most significantly, he served under President Obama and President Trump and is the former secretary of the Department of Veterans Affairs. So veterans are a population near and dear to our hearts, always will be. And if you didn't know, veterans have a higher incidence of chronic pain than um, the rest of the population. So I do wanna tell you a little bit my own story. And like many of yours, it's a sad one. You can see in the picture on the left, at least I hope it's the left for you as well, a picture of me playing tennis. I grew up as a really competitive athlete. At age eight, I started competing in tennis tournaments and by age 11, I was traveling the country with my mom playing national tournaments. By the time I was 18 and heading off to college, I was ranked in the top 250 in the country. I was also a really competitive squash player and traveled the Northeast playing squash tournaments during my childhood too. By the time I was 18, I was in the top 35 in the country in squash. I went to college at the University of Pennsylvania, where I walked on to the Division I squash team, one of the best women's squash programs in the country. I joined a sorority, and I started studying communications with the goal of going to law school after college. Needless to say, I was healthy and I was thriving. 
Towards the end of my freshman year, though, I suffered my first traumatic brain injury or concussion. It's a pretty gruesome story, so I'm not going to repeat it here, but let's just say I had two facial reconstructive surgeries and I had some pretty significant concussion symptoms. But the concussion healed more or less normally. It only took about three or four weeks to resolve. And after the surgeries, I resumed my normal life. All was back in order for the most part. Unfortunately, about 13 months after the first concussion, so this was after um, sophomore year in the summer going into junior year, I suffered my second concussion. And this one had much more debilitating symptoms and it wasn't healing. The symptoms weren't going away. So after a couple months, I finally was diagnosed with what's called post-concussive syndrome, which essentially means the doctors are worried about you. The concussion's not healing. I was put on a special medical protocol and eventually the concussion symptoms did go away, but I was left with severe neck pain, really severe neck pain. And that neck pain then spread to my lower back quite quickly. And over the past nine and a half years, that pain has spread to so many other parts of my body. So today, at any given point, I still live with pain. I'm not one of these people who has reversed my pain, found a cure, and now is here to stand on my high horse and tell you that you too can do it too. I may have 10 symptoms at any given moment on any given day, but I do live with it. So you can see here on the right that this is a picture of me actually just a few years ago. This was taken actually at the Spiro Clinic in Arkansas, which I hear many of you have heard about. Um, and needless to say, actually, that was a really, really painful and devastating experience for me and did not work out for me. Um, but, uh, you know, besides that experience, I've actually taken two leaves of absences to enroll in intensive pain rehab programs, which are extremely expensive cash pay programs and disruptive to life. I've consulted over 200 physicians and some of them have diagnosed me with CRPS. Others have said, no, it's not CRPS, it's fibromyalgia. Others have said, no, it's not either of those. It's Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. So, you know, I don't really know what I have and I'm not sure that it matters. What I have is chronic pain and a central nervous system dysfunction that's causing it. And that's what we know. I've also tried and failed about 50 different medications for pain either getting no relief from them or having horrible side effects that I just wasn't able to tolerate. So, you know, and I've also done a lot of other things. I've done the ketamine, the hyperbaric oxygen. I've had a surgery, lots of procedures, lots of risky things that people told me would cure me and reverse my pain and just weren't true, at least for me. But in the process, I learned a lot about what was wrong with traditional pain care, how fragmented and frustrating it, it really is. And I found myself thinking that chronic pain patients like me were almost the forgotten patients. The patients who, after doctors tried their normal protocols of injections and pills and maybe a surgery and that didn't work, were then told by their doctors, there's no cure for what you have. There's nothing left for you to try. You've tried everything you're out of options. And if you've heard this one before, it's all in your head, that one really stings. So I don't know if a lot of you have felt this way, but it can feel like there aren't really any solutions designed for complex and more severe chronic pain, pain like CRPS, that there's no treatment or a lot of solutions for people like us. You know, sure, physical therapy clinics are great with a sprained ankle or a sore hip, but a lot of physical therapists haven't even heard of CRPS. So what's the likelihood that they can help and aren't actually gonna do more harm than good by treating your pain like it's acute pain? And also, as we were starting to think about building override, my father and I reflected on why traditional pain care failed me. And maybe this relates to some of you. The first reason is that traditional pain care is providers operating in silos. This is fragmented care, not coordinated or integrated care. So what this means is your surgeon's never talking to your pain doctor. Your pain doctor and your surgeon are never talking to your physical therapist. 
and none of them are talking to your psychologist if you have one. And the result of this is inconsistent messaging, conflicting care plans, and a lot of confusion for us, the patients. Oftentimes we're kind of spinning our, spinning our wheels going in circles, not knowing which provider to listen to and which treatment plan to follow. It also reminds me of the age old saying, when all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. And what I mean by that is, if you go to a doctor who operates a ketamine clinic, guess what the doctor's recommending? Ketamine. And if you go to a pain doctor who spends most of her days injecting patients, she's probably going to recommend injecting you. And these, these treatments aren't necessarily what's in the best interest for the patient. They're not necessarily individualized treatments for you or for me. They're just the tool that that doctor has in their wheelhouse. The second reason that we identified for why traditional pain care failed me and so many other people is that this country and outside of this country has a huge access problem to true chronic pain specialists. So believe it or not, there is one physician board certified in pain medicine for every 27,000 Americans with chronic pain. What that means is huge wait lists for pain management and that a lot of Americans don't ever even see a specialist. They're managed by primary care or they're self-managed. It's pretty hard similarly to find a chronic pain trained physical therapist Again, sure, it's easy to find physical therapists who deal with acute pain and can help with a repetitive strain injury like a sore back from sitting at a desk too long or a sprained wrist, but finding chronic pain trained providers who can work on chronic pain treatments like desensitization and graded exercise exposure is really difficult. On the behavioral health front, it's even harder to find psychologists and social workers or coaches who are specialized in chronic pain. So personally, I've gone to a couple psychologists who have said up the front, uh, have said up front, sure, I can help you with chronic pain. And then when I've actually told them my story and told them the amount of medical trauma that I've gone through, they've said, you know what, I really don't have the experience to help you with that. And I've been sent away. You know, again, what I was saying about the forgotten patient, too difficult, too hard, not sure how to help you. So that's that's another frustration. And then finally, I'll mention that there's a real scarcity of interdisciplinary pain rehab centers in this country. Sometimes those are called fun functional restoration programs and the Spiro Clinic in Arkansas probably qualifies as one of them. There are less than 50 of these nationwide. There are almost all cash pay unless you're a workers comp claimant and they can range from $4,000 a week to $10,000 a week, and they often have really long wait lists and require you to leave your home and move to another state. This just isn't acceptable. So needless to say, we've incorporated what we think the solutions to those two problems are into Override, and I'm shortly going to tell you what we actually do at Override. But first, I want to mention this concept of cure seeking. And some of you may have heard the term before and others may not have. But I'd say for a large portion of the nine and a half years that I've spent in pain, I was in cure seeking mode. And essentially what that means is I was looking for that magic bullet. I was looking for a total reversal of my pain. It wasn't enough for me just to have a decrease or to find ways to live with my pain. I wanted it gone. And I think a lot of you have probably done the same thing. A lot of you may still be in cure seeking mode. That may be where you are in your journey and that's okay. But what I've found about cure seeking is that it often leads to very expensive and sometimes invasive treatments like ketamine comas, surgeries, maybe unnecessary surgeries, spinal cord simulators that often don't work out, opioids that can lead to addiction or just really not liking the way that you feel on them, TMS, hyperbaric oxygen, medical devices, and again, these out of state pain rehab centers. And I totally get why pain patients like us are such easy targets. We would do anything and everything to get relief. I know I have. And when someone comes to us and says, listen, I have a treatment and it's gonna be really expensive, but it's gonna fix your pain. 
we all raise our hand and we sign up. We do what it takes to get there. And then when it doesn't work, that huge disappointment and feeling of failure sets in. And I know that feeling really, really well. I actually find it really offensive when treatments promise total relief because then if it doesn't happen, it makes the patient feel like we're the failures. So let me be clear, override is not going to promise you immediate relief. We're not gonna promise you a pain-free life. What we can promise is that if you put in the time and the effort and you're really committed to our comprehensive virtual 12 week program with continued aftercare after that, if needed, that you will start to make some meaningful changes in your life and notice improved function, improved quality of life and reduced suffering. We're really aiming to change the way that people experience pain. And when you do all of this, we found that it often leads to symptomatic reductions, to pain reductions. But we very specifically put our focus on the function, on meaningful life, and on the emotional suffering that then leads to symptomatic reduction. So what is override? It's, it's time that I tell you, I know that. At its core, override is multi-specialty virtual care from a team of chronic pain experts who work individually with you and work together as a team. So a typical override team consists of four members. It's a board certified pain physician. It's a chronic pain trained physical therapist, a pain psychologist or licensed clinical social worker and a certified pain coach. So we've actually taken the burden off our patients by locating chronic pain specialists in their respective fields We've recruited them, we've brought them in-house to override, we've put them on a virtual platform to make them accessible to our patients, and we've also given them a way to work together as a team. So this is saying goodbye to fragmented care, and this is saying goodbye to specialists or generalists who don't know anything about chronic pain. Now, Alexis, if you wouldn't mind sharing the link to our comprehensive pain program, which is the program that I just described. There's one other offering that we'll go over in a few minutes, and that's that's our coaching program. So I wanna just take you through how our comprehensive pain program works. Essentially, you will start with an evaluation with one of Override's board certified pain physicians. That pain physician is going to do what a lot of other pain physicians have done. They're going to review your medical records. They're going to decide if you need labs or imaging ordered. They're going to do medication management if needed. But most importantly, they're going to assess your challenges and decide what members need to be part of your care team. So let's just say you actually have a really good chronic pain trained physical therapist at home that you're seeing in person. Well, we don't want to disrupt that. So we're probably not going to assign you an override physical therapist. Maybe your care team would just be the override pain physician, the certified pain coach, and the psychologist. It's very individualized. We don't wanna give you more than you need, but we also wanna make sure that you have everything that you need. From there, we're gonna loop in the, the new providers on your care team, and you're gonna meet individually with each of them. After those individual meetings, that's going to trigger the first interdisciplinary care team meeting where your providers meet together without you and they discuss your care. They discuss the barriers to progress that they see. They discuss their goals for you and they ask the other providers to help them meet those goals. They create your initial personalized pain plan. And from there, that prescribes the frequency of treatment that you should get the goals that you're trying to meet. And it's pretty much rinse and repeat. You meet individually with each of your care team members. They continue to collaborate on your care and adjust your personalized pain plan. And we also give you access to our pain education curriculum and access to weekly group sessions with other people like you with chronic pain. And the group sessions have two functions. The first is peer support. Chronic pain is really, really lonely. It's great if we have support systems around us like friends and family, but there's nothing like actually being around and speaking with people who are going through the exact same things that we're going through. 
And the other purpose of the group sessions is to have a way to give instruction on the pain education topics that we'll be teaching you throughout the program. And so far we are getting some really cool results. Override's a young company, but we're really helping patients. So I'm gonna just read a couple testimonials. One patient who's been in pain for the last 10 years after a bad car accident wrote to us and said, my care team showed me how to cope with the pain and deal with everything. I wasn't sure at first how it would work, but it was smooth as butter. I learned a lot about myself, what I could do to help myself, how I can help myself with my toolbox, that medication isn't always the answer. So this is a patient who was pretty skeptical about the fact that all of our care is virtual. She wasn't sure how it was going to work. And by the end of the program, she really appreciated that it was virtual, that she didn't have to leave her house, sit in waiting rooms, and go in person to her care. And she actually found that the interdisciplinary program and the care coordination worked really well. And you also notice that she kept talking about what she could do to help herself, how she could help herself with her toolbox. Let me just say a little bit more about that. What we're trying to do at Override is we are trying to transform patients who are passive, you know, passively waiting on a treatment to work and dependent on their doctors for repeat injections or repeat medication refills and turn them into what we call self managers of their own conditions. We want you to develop the tools to be able to manage your pain after override. We don't want you to have to stay in our program forever. So we're gonna be giving you physical, functional, behavioral tools to better cope with your pain and to start turning down the volume on the pain signals that you're bombarded with. Another patient said to us, I've had pain for 16 years and nobody has ever explained it to me this way. I learned about the sympathetic parasympathetic nervous system and how tapping into the parasympathetic nervous system helps. It makes so much sense. So this is a patient who's actually been in pain since she was about 12 years old. And she's tried just about as many things as I have and has spent a lot of money doing it. But she's never learned pain education and worked with providers who have explained how she can calm the nervous system the way that override has. And what she's talking about is neuroplasticity, which Jim tells me is, is a topic that's really popular in the CRPS community right now. And it goes by a lot of different names. Um, you know, I've, I've heard neuroplasticity, I've heard pain science, I've heard pain neuroscience, and I've even heard the catchy one, retrain the brain out of pain. And so some of you may know a lot about this. You may have read different books like, um, Dodges the brain that changes itself or Alan Gordon's the way out, but and some of you may have seen the New York Times and the Washington Post articles on this topic over the past two years. But for those of you who maybe don't know what it is or need a refresher i'm going to give a high level overview. When you live in a sustained period of chronic pain like me and like a lot of you, the brain actually changes. It's a little bit like learning to play an instrument, speaking another language, or even learning to ride a bike. Where at first when a person tries to learn to ride a bike, she stumbles, she falls, she skins her knees, she doesn't have the hang of it. But after enough practice and enough repetition, she really learns how to ride a bike well, and it gets ingrained in the brain to the point that it's really hard to forget how to ride a bike, right? That's what people say. The same, unfortunately, is true with chronic pain. For some people, once an injury heals, the pain disappears. That's how it's supposed to work, right? But for people with CRPS, the pain doesn't go away even after the body has been given enough time to heal the injury. And what happens is the brain actually starts learning how to recreate that pain. It gets used to living in a state of pain because it's been in pain for so long and it forms this very difficult to break error loop, this pain feedback loop kind of goes round and round. And the structure of the brain, the neural pathways actually change to accommodate being in this sustained period of pain. So what some people are referring to this as is that the brain learns pain. And the research is showing that just as the brain can learn pain, 
The brain can also unlearn pain. And that's a process that we're finding that we can help people with virtually. And again, that's by attacking the problem from all sides of the problem, the physical, the behavioral, the functional. So I'll just share some information about our different packages and our pricing. Um, I will mention, and hopefully you can see this at the bottom of the screen, we are a network with Michigan Medicaid, TriWest, OptumServe for veterans, and Federal Workers Comp. We're working on getting a network with a lot of the commercial payers, but I will warn you, this takes a really long time. It is not easy and it is not quick. So it's probably gonna be until early fall or so that we're in network with a few commercial plans. For now, we are offering very discounted cash pay prices. And I'll just go over our most popular plan, the comprehensive plan, which involves one pain physician visit a month, two pain coaching visits a month, weekly physical therapy, and once a month psychology. You also get unlimited care team messaging so that you can be in communication with your providers between visits. You can ask them questions, you can touch base, you can tell them you're having a flare up in a really hard day and get advice from them on how to calm that down. We also, as I mentioned, give you access to our pain neuroscience education curriculum to really start understanding pain, the brain, the central nervous system, and what you can do to calm a dysfunctional nervous system. And we give you access to these weekly group sessions for peer support and pain education instruction. So you get all of that each month for about $95 a week. Now, I know that not everybody is going to be able to afford that. I, I really do understand that. But I also will just compare this to, you know, physicians who practice outside of insurance, a pain physician consultation, just one visit can be $1,100. And if you were to go to one of these pain rehab programs, in addition to the rent that you'd have to pay for a hotel or an Airbnb to stay there, those programs can be $3,500 to $10,000 a week. So, you know, I, I hope that you'll find that this pricing is really, really reasonable. Often you can't find a single psychology appointment for less than $200 or $250 a session, depending on where you are. Of course, we do have some less intensive plans that are less expensive and involve a little less care as well. And what we ask is that if you want to join Override, that you really commit to this schedule, that you commit to showing up, to doing the work in between sessions, and that you're ready to make a change. This isn't a passive process and it does take time. We're recommending 12 weeks for one of these packages. And then at that point, we can either discontinue the care if you feel like you have the tools that you need and you're on a good path to recovery, or we can also give you a less intensive schedule of aftercare with your same providers. Now we are only available with this full comprehensive pain program in eight states. That's Florida, Maryland, Michigan, Minnesota, New Jersey, New York, Texas, and Virginia. We are working on expanding. But before you think that if you don't live in one of those states that we've wasted your time, we do have an offering for our pain coaching program available in all 50 states and outside of the US. So you're probably thinking, what's pain coaching? Some of you may have never heard of that. And up until a few years ago, I hadn't either. But Pain coaching is actually um, a very specialized program where we have nationally certified health and wellness coaches with advanced training and certification in chronic pain management. So unlike most psychologists who maybe are generalists and occasionally work with chronic pain or really don't even have any experience or expertise with chronic pain, our pain coaches are extremely trained and experienced in working with chronic pain patients. This is all that they do. They have firsthand experience with chronic pain. Some of our coaches actually went through our program themselves before going through the rigorous training and certification process themselves to help others with chronic pain. And we've gotten some really good results. This is a proven approach. Um, we have a study published online. 
And the outcomes that we have are a 9.7 out of 10 patient satisfaction score, 80% reduced medication dependence, 70% improved sleep and function, and 46% returned to work for those who weren't working when they started the program. And the protocol here is, is generally one individual session with your coach a week and also one group session a week, as well as access to our pain neuroscience education curriculum. That's our comprehensive plan over here on the right, which is about $70 a week. And again, you know, you, you can't find a psychologist or a social worker or a physical therapist or a doctor who's going to be that inexpensive. And we do this purposely because we're not in this to make a huge profit. We're in this to try to make pain care and, you know, specialized chronic pain care accessible to as many people as we possibly can. And we do also have less intensive plans that are less expensive as well. And so before I turn this over to Jim and Alexis to ask questions and any of you to ask questions, I do want to circle back to this concept of the forgotten patient. The more severe, the more complex chronic pain patient is really why we exist. It's for people like me. It's for people like you. It's for people who haven't been able to find help elsewhere. Override is the solution that I felt like I needed but really didn't exist elsewhere. So when about a month ago, a patient said to us, I appreciate that the program was designed for someone like me, that kind of gave me the shivers because that's exactly what we're trying to do. And I hope that if you decide to work with us, that you'll find the same thing, that this program was designed for someone like you. I'd welcome any of you to reach out for a free consultation with one of our coaches. You can have a conversation about your challenges, what you've tried before, and see if you're a good fit for our program. Not everybody will be, and that's okay. So you can go to www.override.health, or if you and you can click on the free consultation button in the top right-hand corner or at the bottom of the page. Or if you want to just email us directly, you can email us at info@override.health, or you can give us a call at 646-598. 8338. And if any of you just want to talk to me individually, you can reach out to me at jenny at override.health. And I will make sure that Alexis gets these slides and some flyers on both our comprehensive pain program and our coaching program so that you can look at them after this session as well. And again, thank you for having me here. Um, and thanks for your attention. So awesome. Let me go ahead and bring Jim on back. All righty. All right. So I have a couple of questions on my side, but Jim, I think I'll let you kick it off. I, well, first of all, I wanted to say, I know Jenny is a lawyer because that was quite an indictment of our medical system right now. And and I, I have a little pain in my neck because I kept on shaking my head and saying, amen. <laughs> Just before we get into the questions, um, RSDSA has, has paid for a number of people to go into the basic coaching program. And I selected some individuals who I call my frequent flyers, people who would call me there and had not been helped by anything. And they're no longer calling me. They're finding some help. And so basically that for the basic coaching program, you could apply via our Jenkins patient assistance program. Because so often why people don't get well is that it's fragmented care and there's no social support at all. And Jenny, I'd like, before we get in, to just talk about how many of your in individuals that your program's working with are homebound. Maybe about 30 or 40 percent. Mm -hmm. I mean, virtual care is truly a godsend for people who are homebound, who don't have to find transportation and you know, go through all the cumbersome motions of actually leaving the house and going to an appointment. Thank you. And I just, um, Alexis, bear with me just a second. Uh, Becky Curtis is part of your program now and she what, did a Facebook Live for us and we'll put her presentation on later. And, and Becky is someone we trust and someone who has al almost died 
from a horrific car accident and just went through a tremendous painful journey and she's part of override now yeah and and jim you know i'll, I'll mention becky as another example of someone who lives with pain every day becky has severe nerve pain from the neck down and she is one of the happiest people i know she has a ton of meaning in her life from working on the same mission and helping people with chronic pain every day amen all right alexis i'm done no that was perfect but yes becky, <laughs> we definitely loved having becky on and i did share the link to her facebook live in the chat uh, we do have a good number of questions, but I do want to shout out this comment we just received. Someone said, this will be better than what John Hopkins offers, which I'm looking into. Yes, savings and travel and lounging, et cetera, or lodging, excuse me, et cetera. Yeah. So you know, I wish I didn't know as much as I did, but I've looked into the Johns Hopkins program for myself over the years, found out about it in 2018. Um, it's a really medication heavy program. And for some people, that's what they need. I'm not knocking it, but it's also in a locked psych unit, which is the biggest reason why I didn't go because the trauma that I anticipated experiencing from just being on a locked psych unit was um, enough to deter me. All right, so one of the questions we have is, does the physical therapy also include occupational therapy in your program? Our physical therapists are generally doctors of physical therapy, not occupational therapists, but I think there's a lot of overlap between the two. Awesome. Another question, can the psychologist contact a PCP or a psychiatrist in regards to medication? And this is kind of a follow-up question. Also, how does one withdraw from meds if on a lot? Because, um, you know, that could, of course, lead to more emotional issues. Yes, yes. Um, okay, so the first question was whether we're able to be in touch with a patient's existing doctor, whether it's a primary care doctor or a psychiatrist. And the answer is yes. We believe in coordinated care and collaboration to the maximum. So if you have a doctor who's willing to speak with your override providers, we will absolutely do it. And we frequently make recommendations on, you know, whether this patient is ready to start um, tapering down their medication schedule or really, you know, anything along those lines. And I guess that brings me to the next question about withdrawing from medications. We have a lot of patients who start on pretty high doses of opioids or other meds, pain meds like Lyrica or Gabapentin. And while we're not specifically working on, you know, we're, we're not we're not an opioid program, right? You know, we're we're not a substance abuse program. But what we do know is that if we don't give patients alternative tools and pain management techniques to help them cope with the pain as they are withdrawing from their opioids, then that's just cruel, right? So, so we work on giving patients the tools to better manage pain in addition to the opioids. And we find that when we do that, the patients sometimes go to their doctors on their own and they say, I think I'm ready to start coming off some of my meds slowly. Great question. All right, so someone wants a little more information, um, can you please explain the difference between a pain coach and a psychologist? Yes, great question. Um, a psychologist has certain licensure. So typically they're a PhD or a PsyD. Um, you know, it, it makes them more expensive, honestly, is the truth. Um, but, you know, they're they're better equipped and they're better trained to handle, to handle certain uh, psychiatric conditions like severe PTSD or severe um, depression, OCD, um, you know, so so when someone has a psychiatric diagnosis, we would typically loop in a psychologist. But, um, you know, for the very standard depression, anxiety, emotional issues that just come along with living in a sustained period of chronic pain. Our certified pain coaches who are by training health and wellness coaches, not PhDs or PsyDs, are more than equipped to handle it and are very, very used to handling that. Awesome. I have a few more questions, but Jim, do you have any questions on your side? No, I, I think these are good questions. I'm, I'm learning myself. Awesome. 
All right, next question. So I know you mentioned, uh, you know, joining the regular support groups. Are support group members the same age? No, they are not. Um, we actually believe that people can learn a lot from people who are of other ages, of other backgrounds, live in different parts of the country, and even have different conditions. Perfect. Yeah, someone was wondering, you know, if you were 24 years old, for example, maybe in, you know, in a group with young adults, you know, would you be mixed with maybe um, youth or parents? Um, are there groups for um, those who do not have chronic pain? So maybe their support system, like maybe their friends, their family, or is it just the patient? Yeah, great question. Um, we do have family support groups and I see no reason why friends wouldn't be welcome to join, but we haven't, we haven't had that request before. But yes, absolutely. I, you know, I, I know that chronic pain affects my, my chronic pain affects my loved ones and that's just totally natural. So we do offer family support. Awesome. I'm going through the comments now to see, make sure I haven't missed. Jenny, uh, what about children and teens? So um, our licensed providers in the override comprehensive pain program are not able to work with people under the age of 18. You know, the nature of it is that when licensed providers get in the picture that we have different state laws to comply with mm. and different age requirements. So it is more restrictive. But our coaching program, we have worked with a number of children um, as young as nine years old, honestly. Okay, thank you. Because that's an underserved need. Absolutely. And when I was at the Spiro Clinic, there were a good number of children there. Mm -hmm. And we are getting questions about, you know, which states you're getting ready to expand to next. So just a reminder, <laughs> if, you know, if Override is not in your state, you can still um, sign up for the coaching program. And I did put that link in the chat. Yes. And, you know, I'll, I'll mention, you don't necessarily have to live in the state. The, the laws are actually that you have to be in the state when you're receiving that care. So for the very few people that this will apply to, let's say you spend your summers uh, in a different state and the state where you spend your summers is one of the states where Override is in. You could work with us during that time. Great point. Jenny, has, have any of your providers uh, used graded motor imaging and mirror therapy and? Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, so graded exercise exposure is something that we work on with most of our patients. Um, desensitization, I don't think you mentioned that, but that's another tool that we use. So, you know, for people who maybe don't know what that is, it's taking something like a tennis ball that has this weird felt and, you know, using that on the body part that hurts or burns and as well as a hairbrush and different tools um, to try to retrain the brain and the pain circuits. Um, and uh, mirror therapy is definitely something that's harder to do virtually. It really depends on the mirror that the patient has. So, you know, we might say, you know, buy this type of mirror and we can work on this with you. Thank you. All right. So someone's wondering what are the working hours for the sessions and then how many people are in the group sessions? Yes. Um, so in general, for individual sessions, our providers are really flexible. Some of them will give evening or early morning hours. Um, some of them will even do weekend hours just to accommodate patients as well. Um, the group sessions, we do have to find a time that works for all group members. So they tend to be at normal hours, you know, sometime in the morning or the afternoon. And we basically pull the group and say what time is going to work for you. And occasionally, if we need to put a patient in a different coaches group, then um, because that time works better, then we will. What about nutrition and diet? You haven't spoken about that. Yeah. Um, I, we have found that nutrition will be a significant part of some patients recovery and not all. You know, personally, I have tried twice for months at a time cutting out gluten, dairy, and sugar, and I have found no relief whatsoever. Um, but, but in general, we do recommend anti-inflammatory diets, and our coaches work on nutrition with people. Our physician can also help there as well. Um, but it's really case by case. You know, we're, we're not going to totally 
turn your diet on its head necessarily unless we think it's going to be uh, clinically helpful. Thank you. Good to know. And we do have some diet resources um, that we can send you if you send us um, an email to anyone's watching to info at rcs.org. We can send you some um, resources if you're interested. And I did want to read this positive comment that someone left. Um, this program has surprised me. I never realized I had control over my mind and breathing to decrease the pain. The coaches are amazing at explaining the worksheet. So definitely some positive love for Override. Do you want to read that again? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but thank you to whoever wrote that in. And I'm glad that you're watching. I'm trying to check to make sure I haven't missed any comments. Let me refresh a little bit. But definitely keep the comments rolling, everyone. I think that all we have so far. I'm trying to check to make sure I haven't missed anything. Jim, have that you see that I missed any so far? No, I, I think it's been a very comprehensive program. And, and Jenny, thank you for sharing your experience because it's it's so fruitful to talk about the failures as well as learning to manage and, and function so well. You're you're doing you're doing great. You don't need a kudos from me, but you're you know oh. great to hear. Thank you. I, I really appreciate that. Um, it's really interesting because before I started this company, chronic pain was my secret. My close friends and my family knew about it, but mm -hmm. it was something that I didn't share with anybody else. And the nature of running this company is that I've had to speak more publicly about it. So sometimes I'm told I actually do it too stoically, almost automatically. Um, but trust me, there are a lot of tears that have been cried and um, a lot of emotion behind what I've been through. All right. So we did just have another question pop up. Another question about Georgia, if Override is coming to Georgia in the future, <laughs> I think she's working on all 50 states. <laughs> right, Jenny? We, we eventually states. will get to Georgia and hope to get to all 50 states. But, you know, if you are in Georgia, please reach out to us about the pain coaching program for a lot of people. I know you've already tried the pain physicians. You've tried the physical therapy. And it, if it hasn't worked for you, pain coaching is something that I can almost guarantee that you haven't tried except for the person who wrote in and has had a great experience. So if you are in Georgia, please reach out anyway if you're interested in the pain coaching program. Yeah. So I think one more question I just saw come in. This will have to be our final question before we wrap. But if you don't mind um, sharing, um, how do you control your pain now? Yeah, that's always the big question, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, I'm I'm not going to sit here and lie and tell you that I have it totally under control. I I don't. Um, I, I work with one of our coaches regularly and I work hard every day applying the tools that we teach patients. It's little things like humming to calm my nervous system, taking physiologic sighs, which are two inhales and one exhale um, throughout the day and purposely sending calming signals to my nervous system. Exercise has been my biggest weapon for the entirety of my chronic pain. When I'm feeling good enough to walk, I walk. When, um, you know, and if I'm not, I do yoga or I do something just to loosen my body and get some movement going. And I know for everybody, any bit of, if, if I know for some people on this call, any bit of movement might seem impossible. It's not, we can help get you there. Um, so I have a lot of different tools that I use. I mean, this tennis ball is here because I put it behind my back as I work. And, you know, that helps with, uh, with pain in, in my scapular region. And I also use it for desensitization of my fingertips. So I've got a lot of different tools that, that I use and that help me lead a more functional and meaningful life that let me work, let me see my friends, let me exercise. But it's, it's still a work in progress. You know, this, this, isn't a, this isn't a total reversal of pain solution that we have here. Thank you. Thank you. An honest so answer. Yes. So yeah, Jenny, thank you for all this great information. There are flyers and links and presentations um, coming my way. And then of course, I will share those with our community. So of course, everyone, we will have this video pinned 
to the top of our Facebook timeline for easy access if you want to rewatch it. Um, please continue to share this video with the community. I've already seen so many of you sharing it as uh, you know we've been here this evening. So thank you. And of course, we will add it to our YouTube channel with all the links and all of the information that I just mentioned. So if you have any questions for us, if you need a support group, if you're looking for a new physician, or if you want to tell your story on the brand new RSDSA blog, or I should say the revamped RSDSA blog, please send us an email at info at rcs.org and we will get back to you. Alexis, one last comment. I just want to encourage that next uh, next month, do you, what's the date we're going to have our Facebook Live? Do you remember? It's the end of July. I have to double check the date. Yeah, end of July, we're going to have a very important um, two individuals, Dr. Hess and Cami Laval, and she's a person with chronic pain, CRPS, and he is a pain physician, fabulous. And they have passed a law in Massachusetts, I mean, in Minnesota, like three other states that protects the right of a pain physician to take care of his or her patient. And they are going to coach us how to do this in other states. Uh, because so often during since 19, 2016, individuals have been abandoned because of their opiate prescriptions. And um, we have to change that. And it's July 26th. July 26th. And of course, we will send that information out. We'll put it on social media and our website. So keep an eye out. Thanks so much, everyone. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye.